in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God our Father, being a disciple is not a marginal aspect, but central in our life. And you claim priority to all, even our dearest ones. We pray for the grace to prioritize you in our lives. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But everyone sisters in Christ, a, go a gospel text for our catechism today is the conclusion of Jesus' instructions to the twelve before he sent them out to preach the gospel to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew describes Jesus as being moved with compassion for the people because they were troubled and abandoned. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Therefore, Jesus called the twelve his disciples and bestowed upon them authority that he himself was given and sent them to those who are lost. And during their course of mission, they are instructed to fear not and to know what God knows them so intimately that even every hair of their head has been cut. Mary of our sisters in Christ, our passage today makes it crystal clear that to follow Jesus, we have a price to pay. Following Jesus means making him a priority of our life. We need, therefore, to keep our priorities in check to make sure that we are not compromising on the cause. And lastly, but not the least, we must be willing to take up our cross and follow him without reservation, regardless of the cost. Jesus is categorical about total loyalty and commitment. As true discipleship entails, Renunciation, which means conversion, and taking up one's cross, which is not just a matter of patient enduring daily tribulations, but bearing with faith and responsibility. That part of toil and suffering that they struggle against evil entails. While Jesus' instruction remained in minds and disciples of what they are leaving behind also tells them what they will receive in exchange. They will go out as representatives of Jesus, of Jesus himself. They are the ones who have received the prophet, Jesus himself, and they will receive the prophets in As the simplest act of courtesy, giving a cup of water will reap abundant blessings from God, the gift of their sacrifice to proclaim God's coming will be blessed in the same nature. While well, Jesus' disciples risk the real possibility of being rejected by family, they are also joining a new community whose central relationship is in chains. Many of our sisters in Christ, contextualizing our pericope, our counter cases today, our pericope is the continuation of Jesus' instructions to his disciples as he sends them on mission. First and foremost, Jesus called his disciples to enact 
his own ministry to perform the same signs and proclaim the same message. He then prepared them for the hostility they will encounter. If Jesus faced a violent opposition, his disciples were to expect the same. Confound Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. That's the missionary experience of the disciples follows the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we come to the close of these missionary instructions. But dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jewish families in Jesus' time were controlled by the unquestionable authority of the Father. Everyone in his household lived in a total submission to him. This is the notion of family that Jesus is challenged. He says, whoever loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus is talking about priority. Just must be the priority of our life and indeed our men. All other loyalties are second. The choice of Jesus offers is clear and stark. There is no middle ground. Life within Jesus demands a total surrender that is not noticed with conditions, human calculations, or personal preferences. If following Jesus is worthy anything, it is worthy everything. It is life or death. And brothers and sisters in Christ, let us revert to our Bible text for further Bible reflection. Our Bible text reads, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 to 42. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ says, He who loves father or mother, more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the cost of discipleship. The Lord did not lie to his disciples that Following him would not be easy. He did not sugarcoat the talk in order to lure them to himself. But he told them the truth and left them to make a choice either to follow him or to walk away. It was a choice they had to personally make. After they had known what to expect, he says, he 
who loves father or mother more than in me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus requires loyalty to himself, even above all other loyalties. And now he requires loyalty to himself above anything else, even above family. Jesus is not advocating this loyalty to the family, but instead he calls us to place loyalty to God above loyalties to family. It means to be willing to put Jesus' mission above family loyalty. The Lord is trying to make us aware that following him calls for sacrifice. For some of the sacrifices we embrace in our following of Jesus will set us against our own families, will set us against our own friends, will set us against our own relatives. Christianity demands a unique commitment and love for God does not need limitation. He expects us to love him with all our heart, with all our mind, and concretize this love in our service of others. It is this kind of commitment that will sometimes demand that we choose between the closest ties we have here on earth and the Lord whom we want to save. In Christianity, there is always the presence of the cross that we will have to carry. And there is also the sacrifice of our will because we won't always do what we like, but what Christ likes. Hence, he who doesn't take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus' is a promise is that those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for his sake will find it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. Life is both physical or spiritual life. It is often translated soul. However, the Jewish people thought of the person as a holistic being and not divided into body and soul, as the Greeks thought. In this verse, life means someone's personal well-being. We live in what is it for me? What kind of world we are tempted to focus on? What we can get rather than what we can give. Businesses use accounting merit to persuade people to pay more for their stock than it is worth. Executives bail out on golden parachutes, leaving behind broken businesses, ruined investors, and abandoned employees. Politicians make decisions based on re-election consideration rather than the good of the nation. Young people go to college, not to become productive citizens, but to make more money and to have more faith. However, Jesus tells us that such kind of behavior is ruined in the long run. Such people will lose their lives. We see it even in the short term. Truly happy people are those who are and who live not for themselves, but for others and for the bigger picture. 
Jesus did not say is, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who said, Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. In the ancient world, identity was tied to family and community. And it was understood that in shown hospitality, one welcomed not just an individual, but implicitly the community who send the person and all that they represent. It goes without saying that the emissaries represent the function of presence and bear the full authority of the one who says them. Confirm Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, verse 8, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And the other answers is Christ. The disciples represent the full presence and the power of Jesus. Just as Jesus bears the full presence and the power of God. Therefore, Welcoming a disciple of Jesus would mean receiving the very presence of Jesus himself and all the one who sent him, God the Father. While emissary relations might imply a hierarchy of power, Jesus is here instead affirming the full, real, integral, and authoritative relationship between disciples. Jesus and God. These acts of welcoming come at a cost that surpasses food, that surpasses water, that surpasses shelter. They bind those who offer welcome integrally those who are welcome. These acts are not one of events but constitute the defining feature of the mission, generating the social setting where God's way is articulated. God's way is disabled and either accepted or rejected. And Jesus continues, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet who receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, who receive the reward of the righteous. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. And dear man, sister, Jesus draws attention rather to the specificity of welcoming prophets as prophets who expect op opposition and violence at the hands of the powers. Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 to 12, as well as chapter 23, verses 39 to 36. And walk among the righteous as those who work for justice, usually risking their lives to do so. The words prophet and righteous in Matthew's gospel often refer to the prophets and the faithful servants of biblical history, but can also refer to contemporary prophets and righteous ones. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what are the prophets in world and the world of the righteous of Jesus? Elsewhere in Matthew, the prophets receive persecution, they receive rejection and death. And yet those who are persecuted are told, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Similarly, the righteous are promised that they will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 43, Jesus says, and whoever gives even a cup of cold water, one of these little ones, in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. 
Little ones often refer to children, but Matthew uses it to refer to Jesus' disciples, especially those who are young in faith or particularly vulnerable. Confirm Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, as well as verse 10. The statement about giving a cup of cold water to one of these little ones points ahead to the parable of the judgment in Matthew chapter 25, where the Son of Man says to the righteous, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. And it truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my Father, who did it unto me. Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. The righteous who are attained to the needs of the little ones are told, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. The word reward in Matthew chapter 10 carries connotations of something aim, but this word is not used in the parable of judgment. Here Jesus says to the righteous, Come, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. An inheritance is a pure gift. Those who come and care for the needs of little ones will come and care for Jesus himself. To receive Jesus is to receive the one who sent him. And to become a heirs to all that the Father must give. Finally, Jesus speaks about the want of welcome a disciple or offering a cup of water to a disciple. Such will receive the same reward for offering cold water to a little in a disciple's need, as for offering it to the disciple, even to Jesus himself. Those who offer hospitality to the Lord's emissaries receive their reward. Solid points for further reflection. My dear and sisters in Christ, being followers and witnesses to the gospel, Jesus is trying to teach us two important things. Firstly, Jesus is calling us to share his own passion from God. He wants us to light a fire that will burn in our hearts, just like it did in him. Jesus is asking us not just to praise him and adore him and worship him, but most importantly of all, to follow him. Do it as he did. Loving what he loved. Being committed to what he was committed to. That selfless service and in genuine compassion. Secondly, Jesus is asking us to join him in creating a new family. He wants us to leave behind the kind that was so prominent in his time and begin forming a family united by the common desire to do God's will. A community of people dedicated to witnessing to the world what life could be like if we were willing to be transformed and changed from within. Admittedly, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that will not be easy. It will involve stretching us, pulling us out of our small selves, introducing us to something bigger and richer and fuller. It will involve taking us to a whole new level of living, even to one where water is thicker than blood. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, baptism water is thicker than blood. And Jesus must have absolute priority in our lives. This means being faithful, not only in big things, but also in little things. It is tempting to conclude that no one will notice the efforts we put into being obedient in little things. But we need to remember that God does. Hence, we should care to encourage others who are trying to be faithful. Those who are working to share the gospel. Those who meet the needs of people around us. Those who are hospitable. Those that are charitable. Those that are accommodating. Thus, each act of kindness, each word of work, each act of hospitality binds us together in love and moves the universe that much closer to peace. Peace which can begin within ourselves. Peace which can begin with something as simple as a glass of water, a word of welcome, an act of hospitality. This is the peace of God that transcends selfishness, that transcends greed, that transcends hostility, that transcends prejudice, that transcends tribalism that transcends classism, that transcends hatred and even war. It is the peace which can begin with something as simple as an act of charity, such as giving a cup of water, a word of welcome, an act of hospitality. And the Lord says, for those who will come to you also will come me. And those who will come me also will come the one who sent. The Lord has ruled that the world meets him through us. So by following him, we carry an identity that is beyond our own. If we travel, preach, Teach or heal, it is Christ's work and His will which is being done through our hearts. By becoming Christians, therefore, we become God's instruments and so God's work in us and through us. Jesus lived to change the world and He has entrusted His mission. We are agents of that church, one person at a time, and all the time. Through us, the world gets an opportunity to meet Christ. And so we enjoy both the privilege and responsibility to make a Christ visible. May the Lord bless the work of our hearts. Let us God, our Father, our pe other people may not reward us for doing what you have called us to do. But we are mindful that you will reward us, not on account of our work, but on account of our faithfulness and obedience to your way. May our resolve to save you remain undeterred. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this day, oh beautiful.